Well, good evening. I'm Pastor Timothy McGregor. Uh, this is Family Bible Church. This is our Bible study we have uh, with the church related to Black uh, presence in the Bible. So, so glad you're able to tune in during this uh, Advent season as we approach uh, the recognition of the birth of Jesus Christ. So uh, what better chance than to get in a little bit about uh, Black presence in the Bible, especially during a time when there's a lot of different con uh, contradicting messages out there. So I think this is good. I'm so glad we're able to do it. And uh, I know today I was thinking about this concept of uh, Blacks in the Bible and uh, what we know about uh, Christianity. And it's just, it's so overwhelming, the, the, the European influence on Christianity, uh, that uh, it is hard. It's hard to even imagine what the original perspective is. So uh, to think that Blacks are, are the main character in the Bible is very uh, hard to believe with all, all the various different things that occur uh, on TV, uh, you see in your churches, when you see in your advertisements and various other things of that sort. So we are really non-existent during this season. Uh, so uh, hopefully during this presentation, you will be able to see yourself within this, this holiday season. Uh, and if, if, you're, if you're African-American or African, if you're white, you should be able to see yourself because uh, we know that the start of humanity is in Africa. I believe that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know everybody doesn't believe that. If I do believe that, I believe it. So uh, we all have roots there. Well, so uh, hopefully we can stop seeing that as negative, see that as a positive, and embrace those we've rejected for so many uh, centuries and centuries and uh, reverse the negative, uh, the negative. Uh, history that has been used to plague a people uh, for so long, or far too long, all right? So anyways, uh, be, let me just not go on and on about that and not invite my uncle to come in and talk. I'm so happy to have Uncle Leon on board. He's he been a trooper with me for a while now, so I thank God for him being present. Uh, he has been definitely studying this topic for years and years and years, and it's well-versed and Blacks within the, uh, the Bible and Christianity. So we're delighted to have him uh, on board. Uncle, how are you doing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Good to see you again. <laughs> it's been a while. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. Yes. It's been a while. You know, this is a, a kind of difficult time of the year for me because I feel as though we're just bombarded with the European... Uh, interpretation, right? Uh, and and all of the films, all of the photos, uh, even the music. It's just uh, not a very uh, a comforting time uh, to just deal with um, all that's um, being presented on the media. And very seldom do I see any representation of uh, other ethnic groups, right? And so I just uh, pray the Lord to give me strength to get through another uh, Xmas, Xmas uh, season. Right. Right, right, right. I agree with you, Uncle. You know, I feel like the more I uh, read and study and become enlightened about the presence of blacks in the Bible, things I knew already, but you know, when you have proof, it's just, you, you know, it's another, there's another layer of understanding when you have proof. You know, so the more I read uh, and the more I get frustrated. <laughs> I get Amen. frustrated because I, I started to think about so many years sitting under this one perspective. Yes. And not really... Uh, being enlightened to the reality of the situation, thinking that it's 
what I see on TV and what I see in the books, knowing that it's incorrect. But then when you really, when you really start to uncover things, you say, man, this is not just incorrect, but this has been a lie. Yes. This has been deceptive, you know, a, a deceptive lie to keep people in religion in the dark. And then that to me, anger becomes, you know, you like, you know, you know, you know, how many people you kind of get the impression like not only have I been bamboozled, but I kind of feel like other people who are my people have bamboozled me too. Yes, 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 yes. It was like my own people bamboozled me. That's terrible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it's 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 very uh, it's heartening to say the least. Yeah. Oh, uh, like I say, I'm so glad that we're able to meet together and talk because to me, this is a great time to talk because we need to look at the presence of blacks within the Bible and to know that the Bible is black history. Yeah. It's so important. And you can say that, you know, with confidence, yeah. you know, the Bible is black history, you know, that we are not just a, a character in the Bible, but we are the Bible. You know, so that's something I think must be taught you know, not to say that, uh, you know, whites and other races are not impacted by Christianity. We all know they are. Yes. So many years it's been taught that we don't even exist. Just as a side note. And, uh, man, what an atrocity. What an atrocity that is. So, anyways, we're going to talk, we're going to talk on the light like that. Uh, forever, we'll never get to what we're going to talk about today. <laughs> but uh, how about we go into our first slide? Um, Family Bible Church, and that's me. I'm Pastor Timothy McGregor, uh, and uh, we're dealing with uh, the Black presence in the Bible, and that is the book that we're covering today and been covering for a while, right here, okay, the Black presence in the Bible, and uh, it's been very, very enlightening, I've uh, learned a lot from this book, and uh, we've had many, many sessions on it, and I know I've been away doing some stuff, because <laughs> I'm working on, I'm going back to school, starting January, so all of this study and stuff has led me back to school. <laughs> all right. It's led me back to school to learn more. I need to learn more and become more of an expert on different aspects. You know, and the Lord has opened up some doors for that to take place. Thanks be to God. But uh, I'm telling you, this book is good. And then after we get done with the volume, we'll go to volume two. You can see both books there. So if you get a chance, read these books, get these books. If you're a pastor in the community, you need these books, especially if you're in the black community, you need these books. You need books like these. And when we get our, up, our uh, website up and running, we're going to put all the books that we cover on the website. But you can begin to do your own research. This is not about tantalizing people, evangelizing people, growing uh -huh. churches. Not, I'm not really interested in that. I'm not interested in growing a church, even though, I mean, I know sometimes that occurs. You know, I, we, I'm not interested in planes, automobiles, and in trains. You know, we're interested in people being liberated mentally. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mentally liberated. Amen. And not in bondage. You know, to the to the chains. Uh, of the past, you know, in present racism that has been taught over the century. Yes. You know, and a lot of it is in our mind, just like an elephant doesn't move away from the little rope around his ankle as it gets Amen. lost. Amen. You know, that's just how we are. Okay, so uh, it takes a lot of reprogramming to get the individual to know 
that you no longer have to be bound by that anymore. You can break free. So that's what this is about. Breaking free. So these books will help you break free. And if not you, well, community break free. So I hope you engage us in these kind of discussions. You can go on to the next one. Uh, this is some of the people you, uh, that you see. Uh, how about we go to our first question? This important uh, scholar, theologian, uh, exeget and exegeted and um, a pioneer in the biblical uh, uh, criticism produced in uh, the the hex of hex hex of, of hexapala comparing six versions of the Bible. He profoundly influenced the theological of the succeeding uh, succeeding century. Uh, this is an African scholar from the uh, the, the the early church. Amen. In the East. Any thoughts on who it might be, huh? Excuse me? Any thoughts on who it might be? There's a lot of them, but you know. It still might be a little too big. No guesses? Um, I guess Cain Ho Felder comes to mind. Mm -hmm. No, you're too, too, uh, too, too, too young of a century. That's too, that's too recent. You got to go further back. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's further than that. How about we get to the next slide? So, origin. The African okay. Scholar uh, became the director of the uh, nautical school at age eight. Uh, his was the finest uh, mind in the church would produce in 300 years. Origin was highly successful in debating Jews, pagans, uh, Gnostics, and is in fact credited with destroying Gnosticism. Important biblical scholar, theologian, pioneer in biblical criticism, produced comparing a, a, a hex of Expola comparing six versions of the Bible and profoundly influenced the theological thought of succeeding centuries. All right. Well, he looks white there, but. Yes. I put that on there on purpose. I was understanding his life did end too well. Uh huh. I understand his life did end too well, that uh, he, was, he was eventually punished. Because he didn't go along with the new, uh, uh, the new interpretation of theology, mm. the European interpretation. Yeah. And who was that again? You're talking about, Uncle? Yes. Then the uh, origin was eventually punished oh, because okay. he didn't go along with. Um, Constant Constantine's interpretation. Mm -hmm. Well, you eventually. I don't remember that part of the history, but I'm not I'm not negating that it actually exists. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a large history yeah. on origin. You see, from eighteen one eighty five to two fifty four. By the time he existed. All right. Well, there goes our fun fact for today. All right. Before we get into our biblical discussion today, I want to read some uh, scripture. You know, we typically do that. Hey, Trish, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, cousin? I'm good, cousin. All right. Good to have you on board. Good to be here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's always a blessing. Yeah, so here we are. Another week studying the Bible, studying the history, learning, growing. That's what it's all about. Let me read uh, out of the 
the original African Heritage Study Bible. Um, I'm going to read Luke 2. Typical for a time that we're in right now. So, okay. Luke 2, chapter 1. I mean, chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse number 1. It says, And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world would be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrus was governor of Syria, and all went to be taxed. Everyone into his own city. Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house of the lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his, his espoused wife, being great with child. So it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. She brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in the manger, because there was no room for them in the end. <laughs> Always good scripture to read, I think, uh, no matter how many times you read it. So, I'll read that from uh, the King James Version, if you will, not that the King James Version is so holier than thou, we know that's not the case. <laughs> but uh, I've just been reading it for a long time, so I read it. In RSV, it's actually more accurate, I think, than the, than the King James. The new Revised Standard Version is actually, I think, more accurate than the, uh, than the King James Version. And uh, so anyways, we're going to go forward and read out of the books of the Ethiopian Bible missing from the Protestant canon. Books of the Ethiopian Bible missing from the Protestant canon. All right. So I hope you get a chance to add this also to your uh, library. Okay. Your uh, pastor or a teacher or whatever, and you want to learn more, study more, you know, you need to pick this up. Man. This is, this is, this is church right here. The history of the church. Yeah, this is, uh, this is older than any of the Bibles that we read and more accurate. So, um, We've been brainwashed to think we can't read beyond what we've been taught by the church. And I say, the European church. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Which is a lie. Okay? You should be able to, you know, read other books that are more authentic, you know, especially to us. And uh, the Ethiopian church has been around longer than any church. So we definitely should be able to read from them. Okay. We should read from them first. All right. So anyway, I'm going to read out of First yeah, Ezra chapter 5. I want to say we read number, we read out of four before. Did we read four before. No, we read three before. Um, How about we read four then? Uh, first Ezra chapter four. In this in this book, it's on page eight. Uh, but 
uh, we're only on page eight for a hot second, just to just the title, first Ezra four is on page eight, then it starts on page nine at the top with verse number one. Then the second that had spoken of the strength, the strength, the strength of the king begun to say, O ye men, do not, do not, do not men excel in strength and bear rule over sea and land and all things in them. But yet the king is more mighty, for he is the Lord of all these things and have dominion over them. Whatsoever he commandeth them, they do. If he bid them make war, the one against the other, they do it. And if he send them out against the enemies, they go and break down the mountains, walls, and, and towers. They slay and are slain, and the transgressions not, and, and transgress not the king's commandment. If they get the victory, they bring all to the king, as well as the spoil and all things else. Likewise, for those that are no soldiers and have not to do with wars, but use husbandry when they have reaped again that which they had sown. They bring it to the king and compel one another to pay tribute unto the king. And yet he is but one man. He command to kill, they kill. If he command to spare, they spare. If he command to smite, they smite. If he commands to make desolate, they make desolate. If he commands to build, they build. If he commands to cut down, they cut down. If he commands to plant, they plant. So all these people and his armies obey him. Furthermore, he lieth down and he eateth and drinketh and taketh his rest. And these keep watch round about him. Neither may any one depart and do his own business. Neither disobey they him in anything. O ye men, how should not the king be mightiest when in such sort he is obeyed and he have his tongue? And the third who had spoken of woman and of the truth and his uh, and this was Zerubbabel began to speak, O ye men, it is not the great king nor the multitude of men, neither is it the wine that is excelleth. Who is, is, who is it that ruleth them or have uh, Jawship jo, over, over them or Godship over them? Are they not women? Women have borne the king, all the people that, that bear rule by sea and land. So we read this. You remember reading this? Remember reading this, Uncle? I can't hear you. You got me on mute. Yeah, we read this. Trish, you remember reading this? No, I don't remember. No? We read this story. We read this one already. Trish, you might not remember this, but uh, we did read this one. Was that uh, page four, uh, first in Ezra? Page eight. Page eight, I'm sorry. Page eight. And that was chapter four of Ezra. Okay. Yeah, we read this. We read this. But it's still good to read again. Oh yeah. Do you remember the story about the kings and I mean about the uh, uh King Darius and you know uh the uh, the governors and captains and lieutenants India to uh, of Ethiopia and how they had this this uh, uh this story about who is the greatest. All right. Is it women? Is it the kings? 
you know, what is, what is, who is the greatest? Is it men? And then it ultimately came down to, it is the Lord. Yes. The Lord is the greatest. And that was, that was, so we did read chapter four of Ezra. Read some of it. I don't know if we read the whole thing, but we read some. Of it. All right. Yeah, so we read into, uh, I, I believe we read on the page number 10 uh, in, uh, I'm sorry if you're, if you're paying attention to this and you don't have this book, I'm sorry, this is hard to, you know, follow along if you don't have the book, but uh, the book, in this book, and in the book, uh, we're on page number 10, but it, it just talks about the story about uh, these uh, various different uh, offices within the kingdom trying to decide who, who is the greatest of all time, who is the greatest, who is the goat, if you will. So, huh. You know that the, the greatest of all time is God. Yeah. Man, it is not woman, it is not kings, it's God. God is the greatest. Amen. That is a good message to to have during this particular season. That not the commercialism, not Santa Claus, not the gifts, but the greatest is the Lord. That's what we should All right. do during this season. All right. Yeah, so anyways, we'll go on to five. We'll go five next time, okay, y'all? All right. All right, we'll go five. I know we kind of went over the same story, but that's okay. It's okay, maybe the Lord has something to show us in that one. So thank God for that. All right. All right. Uh, how about we have a prayer? Any prayer request? I'd like to just keep all of the people in Kentucky in prayer. Uh, 200, and, 200 miles of destruction in a matter of short matter of hours. Many did. Uh, sad, sad situation. Uh, so let us keep them all in prayer as they continue to rebound and uh, try to move forward. This holiday season, uh, such a horrific devastation. Hey, cuz. Hey. I just wanted to, I just had a prayer request, just feeling under the weather, just um, pray for me. Amen. And also Amen. we've got this bad weather that's supposed to be coming in here. I just, I just ask that we pray for, you know, pray for us here as you know, these storms can affect us as well. So. Amen. Let's pray, pray for travel and mercy, you know, and uh, yes. they get back and forth, you know. Yes. I'm on call tonight, and I'm I'm just praying I ain't got to go to the hospital late at night, and it's frozen over on the road. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be praying, you know, and I'll pray for you too, cuz. Thank you, cuz. Appreciate. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, any other prayer requests? Huh? I just pray for the volunteers. Um, we're trying to serve those people after that uh, disaster. And, of course, we have a relative over in India who is also volunteering, Chloe. Mm -hmm. Is she in India? I believe so. Okay, I thought she was like Uganda, in Uganda. In so. Yep, they're over in the Far East. Um, mm. I think they're dealing with, um, she's supporting that surgery that they do to correct people's um, faces and mouth. Left, left. Left, uh, uh huh. Left lip. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, keep Chloe in prayer, man. Yeah. Oh, no, want nothing to happen to her. Nobody else. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's bow in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for everything you've shown us in this time. Lord, we lift up these concerns to you, uh, Lord. All those who have suffered during this uh, season of tornadoes in uh, Kentucky. We pray, God, for strength, Lord, as they rebound and uh, 
begin to build back again. We pray, God, for resources uh, from the people of God and those who are able to go there and, and provide help. We pray, God, uh, for those who are grieving the loss of their loved ones during such a hard time in the year or a time where we are supposed to get together with families. We have to get together and uh, uh, think about having funerals in the midst of mass devast devastation. So, Lord, touch them at this time, Lord. And uh, also lifting up uh, my cousin, uh, uh, my cousin Trish, just pray for healing and wholeness for her. But as she moves forward in her health, Lord, that you will touch her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord. And uh, anything she needs, Lord, we ask that you supply according to your riches and glory. So watch over my cousin, Lord, uh, who is in uh, the east right now working with uh, the cliff note, the cliff uh, lip, and uh, trying to correct that problem. And just pray, God, that you would give her uh, the guidance she needs, the protection she needs, Lord, and all of them for this holiday season during all of these uh, uh, different national uh, uh, natural disasters, Lord. We just pray, God, that you will control them, Lord, and stop them, Lord, and not allow anything to hurt them. Oh, Lord, we lean on you for guidance during this time, Lord. Uh, a lot of people are, are stealing and, and breaking at homes, home invasions, up, Lord. Uh, Father God, let us know the true reason of this season is not money or buying stuff or trees and presents under trees or Santa Claus, but it's all about Jesus, it's all about you, Amen. Father God. So let us celebrate you in the true meaning of this season. For Messiah is born. Because you were born, that means we can have new life. And be reborn again. We thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. All right. How about we get at it? All right. So. All right. The blackness of the old covenant community that we'll cover is the blackness of the covenant uh, covenant uh, uh, messianic community, blackness of the messianic genealogical line, the blackness of the Messi, uh, Messiah uh, himself, Christ Jesus the Lord, uh, the blackness of the Hebrew, like uh, Judite, Judite, uh Jewish people. Abraham, father of the biblical Hebrew people, a descendant of Shem, according to the table of, of nations in Genesis, in Genesis 10, 8 through, through 10, uh, is listed as a descendant of Shem. But uh, we have come to find out that he is one of black pigmentation or and, and black ethnic culture uh, because of where he comes from. So a lot of people may have been uh, under the wrong impression that Mesopotamia and Sumer up there on that map is of a, a, a caucus uh, a, a persuasion, uh, but we know that's not the truth. That is a lie. And all of that area you see on that map right there is black. Okay, so uh, you're looking at Egypt, Arabian desert, and all that area is black area. Uh, in the day and age. So all these people were black people, uh, that uh, meaning their pigmentation was dark and they were people of the sun. Okay. So this is a this is this is what you should be seeing now <laughs> during this time of holiday season and not uh, the opposite of what you'll see, which is a lot of white characters and nobody black. <laughs> uh, hey, what was you gonna say? Oh, nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, so uh, Earl of Chaladin, south of Babylon, you kind of see some of that on the map, you know, uh, Ur is up there by uh, uh, Kish, Summer, up there, see Ur. About the Persian Gulf, the Persian Gulf look kind of like to where it gets skinny. Uh, by summer, you'll see Ur there. 
So that's kind of where Mesopotamia was. That's where Abraham was coming from. Okay. They were semi-nomadic and lived uh, north of the Arabia, as you can see him, uh, the Persian Gulf. We can move on to the next slide. Job, uh, oh no, you, you had it right. You can go back. Job 117, while he was still speaking, and another messenger came to him, said the Chaldeans formed three raiding parties and swept down the camels and they offered him, they put the servants to the sword and, and I am the only one who has escaped to tell, to tell you. So it's just a snippet about uh, the Chaldeans of black people, okay? And they were distinctive uh, from the uh, Armenians. Chaldea was a land occupied by the Cushites. Okay? We know about the Cushites and about Cush. Uh, uh, one of the big sons of Cush is Nimrod, okay? And we know these were all coming from the Hamanites. And Ham is a child of Noah. So we know that these are black people. Okay. So, um, like I said, you know, Chaldeans and Ur, and this is, I was reading out the code, so, you know, uh, we shouldn't be surprised to see our people everywhere in the Bible. The Bible is black history. Genesis 10, 8 through 10, Cush was the father of Nimrod, who became a mighty warrior of earth. He was a mighty hunter before the Lord. That is why he is like, he is said like Nimrod, a mighty hunter before the Lord. The first center of his kingdom were Babylon, earth, uh, Akkad, and Yanir, and Shemir. Summer was the home to the blackheads, as they called themselves. So you see Summer right there, it's right in Mesopotamia, right? And they call themselves the Blackheads. Why do you think that was? <laughs> I'm gonna take a rocket scientist and figure that one out, does it? Uh, no. So, you know, that's it's right there, right? Yep. That's where Abraham came from. We're talking about the quote unquote, if you will, father of the faith. That's what they like to call Abraham, right? All right, let's go on. Unless somebody has a comment. Okay, this indigenous black people migrated into summer from the Nile Valley close to the Nile River. You can see the Nile River right there. Like, where the valley is right around in that area there. Okay, you can see the Red Sea. That's not really that. That's more like the Persian off area, and I think the Red Sea is is open up larger than that, a little further down. No, no, no. That's right. That's right. Because if you look closer up, it's, it's this is. This map is a little distorted, so you can't really see it all that well. But yeah, that's that's correct. That's what the Red Sea. Is. So right across from the Red Sea was the Midian Midian area. Okay. And uh, Midianites is where Moses was. Remember Moses fled, fled because he was in uh, a threat of his life. He had killed an Egyptian, and he fled. Right. His uh, father-in-law, Jethro, was a Mennonite priest. Well, that's right across the Red Sea. So you see uh, where uh, uh, Egypt, Sudan, Ethiopia, right across that Red Sea is Mennonite. Oh, you'll see it later. All right, so these are black people. They have discovered archaeological proof from skulls containing variations to the Ethiopic and the afro Afriite skulls found in Africa's interior and in Egypt, all right, uh, to, to prove that these were black people. Ur was the most powerful city of summer in its era. 
Hey, um, can you mute your mic? I think I'm getting a little bit of reverb. Is me? Yeah, can you mute your mic? Can you mute your mic? I think I'm getting a little reverb. Okay, thank you so much. All right, so her, her uh, dominated uh, South Babylonia. Uh, Abraham is said to have left the city in 2000 BC, the height of his commercial enterprise. So uh, Ur was a really, really prosperous city. Prosperous city, and lots of uh, commerce. Uh, so this is where Abraham comes from. This was a black city, okay? So uh, a prosperous black city. Yeah, Abraham places uh, places where he lived were these places as listed below, okay? And those are the different scripture references where you can find those places. I mean, those the mention of those places where he lived. Canaanites, he lived with the Canaanites, the Pezzites, the Philistines, the Egyptians, the Hittites. Okay? He, you know, so he mixed, intermingled with all these black areas. All right? In addition, it is clear, uh, both by proof of Haggai's residency, that Egyptians lived with Abraham as well, because we know Haggai was an Egyptian. Right, later, we find that the descendants of Jacob, the Israelites, would follow suit and live in Goshen, Egypt. And uh, let's go to the next slide. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm going to ask you, uh, Charles, if you could, let's go to one more slide ahead of this one, and we'll come back. Because I think. Okay, thank you so much, because I, I stuck this map on here. So if you can see where Goshen is right there. You see it where it says Lower Egypt? All right, so they dwell there too in Goshen. That's right in Egypt, all right? All right, and then I talked about Midia, right? And you see it's right across from the Gulf of, what is that called? Uh, Agapa? Agaba? Is that right, Uncle? You got to unmute yourself. Yeah, it looks good to me. Agapa? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Thank you for enlarging that, Charles. So let's go back. Let's go back to uh, a couple more slides back, so we can go back to that where I had it. Uh, one more, if you will. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I talked about how the Israelites would uh, follow suit and live in Goshen, Egypt. So you seen where uh, Goshen was up there? Uh, you know, that's where they lived. Okay, you can go to the next slide. Thank you. All right, Joseph is said to have married uh, an Egyptian lady. All right, uh, her name was uh, Asnith, As, 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 Asnith, Asnith, Asnath. Okay, A S E N A T H. Okay, the daughter of Potiphar, Potiphar, uh, Potipharian, uh priest of the city uh, of On, okay? Two children, they were born to them, Ephraim and Manassas. All right? So uh, this is, uh, these are black people right out of Africa. All right, so Genesis 4, uh, 41 and 45 states that, talks about, Joseph and his wife and his two kids from the land of Egypt. I mean, it wasn't just him. I mean, there's many, 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 many,
All right, I could be many, many in until the whole hour is up, okay? That's how many more of this type of relationships existed. Uh, flags. A lot. Uh, what did you say? <laughs> did you say Trish? I said, which is a lot. Yes, yeah, a lot. That's right. A lot, a lot times infinity. You might as well uh, just say it. so many. That's right. You're going to see that, you know, as we go forward in the slides here. So uh, just reading a little bit of Genesis 41, 50 through 52, before the years of famine came, two sons were born to Joseph and uh, the daughter, okay, the priest of On. Joseph named his firstborn Manassas and said, it is because God has made me forget all my trouble in all my father's household, the second son, Ephraim, Ephraim, okay, and said, it is because God has made me fruitful in the land of my suffering. See? Multiplying. Huh? I like this image, you know, so I, I thought I'd stick that up there too. <laughs> and, you know, we got to reprogram that mind. It's amazing how images impact our mind. You know what I'm saying? Even more so than what we read. So let's move on to the next one. All right, these sons of Joseph became ancestors of the tribes of Israel, bearing their names to explicit, explicitly black tribes. Okay. So these were these were not just black by uh genealogy or by culture, but by, by by the way they look, by you know, the facial and their in their, their physical characteristics, okay? Israelites frequently intermarried with Egyptians. Over 400 years of, of in Egypt, Israelites increased their population through intermarriages with the Egyptians. They started, when they first entered into Egypt, there were 140 of them, okay? When they left, there were two and a half million at the time of Exodus. Okay, so there was a great number of mixed and maybe Israel and Israelites offsprings. They all left under the leadership of Moses. All right, in Exodus 12, uh, 35 through 38 says the Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Sotuth there or about 600,000 men on foot besides women and children. Many other people went up with them, and also large droves of livestock, both flocks and herds. Moses joined with his wife Zipporah, Zipporah, who was a Mennonite. I told you about that, right? Mennonite, and now it's circled on that map. You see it circled there, right across from the Gulf there, and right there by the Red Sea. Okay, and she was called a Cushite. And we know when that when they say somebody's a Cushite, that means they was black. <laughs> Amen. They were labeling you. They were labeling you. Like if you went somewhere, they said, Ooh, look at that Cushite woman. They talking about that's that black woman over there. That's what they meant. That's right. That's what they would say. They'll, they'll say, Oh, you know what? You you know, uh, have you met Diana? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's a Kushite. That's what they meant. That's what that meant. That's their sister, Diana. That's right. That's right. It's Diana. She's a Kushite. That's what they meant. That's what that meant. So uh, that, that's what that meant right there, all, all around that area. Okay? I like that image in the back, so I just stuck that. All right, let's move on. All right, so when Jethro and the priests of Min and Midian, uh, Moses' uh, father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moses and for Israel and his people, the Lord had brought Israel out of Egypt. Uh, Jethro, Moses' father-in-law, took Sephora, Moses' wife, after he had sent her back and her two sons and with the names of one of uh, Gershom, and he said, I have 
being an alien and strange land. Okay, land of Canaan was already inhabited by black people. Okay, they were there before the Israelites got there. Okay, so when the Israelites got there, it was more of the same. Okay, there was a lot of intermarrying of people with the Canaanites and the Hamanite, uh, the Hamnic uh, people. Okay, so um, you see a little bit of that in this scripture in Judges 3, 1 through 6. The nations of the Lord left to test all those Israelites who had not experienced any of the wars in Canaan. You know, whenever they did wars, they mingled with people, you know, mingling or intermarried and things of that sort, okay, with the wives and, the, and all that stuff, okay? He did this only to teach warfare to the descendants of the Israelites who had not had previous battle experience, the five rulers of the Philistines, the Canaanites, the Sidonians, and the Hivites living in the Lebanon mountains from Mount uh, Babel, uh, Huron to Lebanon, Hamath. So you see there uh, where they're staying, living with the Hivites, you know, the Lebanon mountains. We're talking about over in which we call the Mesopotamian area. Um, black people living right there. Okay? So, you know, uh, let's get all these images of these European people on camels out of our heads. And this European Ma Mary and this European Joseph and European uh, baby out of our head. This is not true. That stuff is false. These were black folk. Amen. All right, this is this not to be angry at anybody. This is about truth. People will be liberated by the truth. You need to know the truth. You know? Because the truth sets you free. The truth sets you free. You know what I'm saying? Stop teaching your people that Jesus is from Europe and from Germany and all this other kind of stuff. I mean, that's what you're doing when you paint these images of Jesus as a white man with long hair and stuff like that. And you know, that ain't true. You know, he ain't gonna be up in Egypt, uh, you know, blending in, you know, looking like that. Now, if he was blending in in Europe, we would expect that he would look like Europeans. That would just be the case. Okay, so, uh, you know, this is important to realize, you know, uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, nephew. <laughs> My nephew's helping me out. He, he's he's running the show in the background. You don't see him, but he's running the show. Thank you, Charles, for hooking us up. Charles McGregor. Thank you, Charles. Yeah, yeah you keeping it, keeping us on target. Let's move forward. Let's move on to the next slide. Thank you. I wanted to put the color of the cross up uh, this movie. There's more than one series, well, more than one of these. Check this out. These are black movies on the biblical story. Okay. Uh, you're not going to find these on Amazon, on Amazon Prime and all that, but you can order them and, you know, have them in your house and, and let your kids watch them. You watch them. You know what I'm saying? Change your mind on this. You know, you should see Mary as a black woman. Did I say that? And not study. <laughs> no, you did not. There's also a movie, Doug, um, Doug has it, um, but it, because I know that I watched it curty, um, courtesy of Cynthia, but Blair Underwood actually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what you're talking about. He could be where he is Christ is I Blair think Underwood. A good mm -hmm. one too. That's a good one. That's right. That's a good one too. So there's more than one of these. Oh, so is. check that out. There's about three of these out there. Uh, yeah. And I haven't seen this one, but I've seen the other, the others. Uh, so check them out. Uh, so they're left to the test, the Israelites, to see whether they would obey the Lord's commands. Okay, so 
uh, the Messianic line, the genealogical line through which the Jewish uh, Messiah was to come was ethnologically uh, black. Okay? And you'll see this because Judah married Canaanites. Okay? So we're talking about black people here, y'all. Okay? <laughs> uh, you talking about Tamar and, and Bashara? Uh, this, these are these are uh, these are black people, all black, and and this is where the line of David came from, Tamar. Okay, so go back and read these scriptures, uh, and you'll find out more about this. And uh, I know we're getting close to our time. Yeah, I hate that we're getting real real close, but uh, we are nonetheless. Uh, go back and read some of this. Uh, go on to the next slide. We're going to come back uh, next week and talk. No, maybe not in the way. Next week. Uh, next week, we're right at uh, Christmas, aren't we, huh? Well, Christmas yes. on Saturday. So next week is the 22nd. All right. So, yeah. So this is just a scripture discussing the 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 roots, okay, of the Messiah, where he was born from. We started with Tamar, till we reach all the way down. You go if if you see uh, the sons of Judah, uh, on it, it's all the way down there. It's on Oman and and Shalah, uh, verse number three of First Chronicles chapter two, and then it says. Uh, they were born to a Canaanite woman, okay? And a daughter-in-law, Tamar, bore uh, Pezera, Pez, Pez, Perzer, Pezer, I don't know how you say that, uh, Zerar to Judah. Okay, go to the next slide, if you will, there. Um, First Chronicles 2, okay, these are the sons of Israel, sons of Judah, verse 3, Tamar, his, his, his daughter-in-law, bear him these two, and all the sons of Judah, or five. Go to the next one. Have you seen this movie? Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. I like that one too. Have you seen that, Uncle? I can't hear you muted yourself. Yeah, so. You've seen that one too? Uh, kind of a musical to, to it, so but, uh, Black Nativity. I like that. I like Black Nativity. I think it's good. It's got uh, Jennifer Hudson in it. It's got uh, Tyrese in it. Uh, it's got, you know, uh, I enjoyed it. I really liked it. Yeah, yeah. It's got Mary J. Blige in it. It's got Nas in it. I think it's a good movie. It's a good movie. Yeah. So. Uh, Look, verse number five, uh, 15 there. Ozum the sixth and David the seventh. So what are we looking at? We're looking all the way down to King David. Right, but we first started with who? Mar. We started with the Canaanite wives. So this is, this is the lineage. You hear me? This is the lineage. They're all coming from this. That's the family tree of David back up to Judah was affected by the line uh, can be traced through the, uh, the lineage descendants of Solomon, uh, Re Re Ro Ro Bam, Ro Bam, okay, and so forth, okay? But all of these people were located in Africa. These are African people, not just by geographical means, but also by 
explicitly by the way they look, okay? Their culture, everything, okay? So to see a movie like this is not, or it should not be a, 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 a rarity or, or a something that's being seen as someone is trying to pull the wool over our eyes. No, and this should be more of an enlightening. This is what it looked like. And the other versions that you're seeing out there is not accurate. That's pulling the wool over your eyes. Okay? It's everywhere. During this season, don't be bamboozled. Don't let your kids be bamboozled. Uh, don't promote bamboozledness. You know what I'm saying? That's a word. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't put all those uh, things in your yard and you know Jesus and Joseph and and Mary was not white. You know, don't put that in your yard. You know what I'm saying? And don't, don't tell your kids this. Don't go to your church and look at your stained glass windows and see your white Jesus on the cross. That's Don't do that. Don't see that. You got to do, we got to do better. If you know better, you got to do better. There should be more accountability. Okay? People grow up, they, they get mad at this kind of stuff. You know what I'm saying? And then they leave the church. And then you talking about why they leaving the church. You know, why they think, you know, uh, they always try to be so militant. But it's not they trying to be militant. They're just tired of the lies. Go ahead, Trish. What was you going to say? No, because I just said amen to what you were saying. <laughs> you know, I get on my soapbox. But, you know, hey, man, this is, this is where I am on this one. I just think, you know, I don't hate nobody. I love all people. All people are created by God, but the issue is with sin and the sin of racism, the sin of, uh, of separatism has been going on for centuries. Black people have been bound by this sin and it's perpetuated by the majority and even by the minority. We got to change that. Okay, let's continue. Let us continue. Let us continue. All right. So, you know, when you get a chance, you know, uh, come on back through this particular presentation and read some of this. You know, you'll, you'll see, you know, even looking at David continues right through Joseph and the husband of the husband of Mary, of whom Jesus was born. Okay. So this is the line, if you will, of, uh, of the Messiah, okay? So we're talking about uh, blackness, okay? As a kind of mission above was great-great-grandfather of prophet uh, Zephaniah, okay? This is important information because this, uh, this Hezekiah was the 14th king of the southern kingdom of Judah, the kingdom through which the messianic line continued. Zephaniah says his father was named Cushy, okay? Son of uh, Gil, Gilvanel, son of Yeria, son of Hezekiah. Okay, so anyways, okay, read this for yourself. <laughs> read it, go to your Bible and read it. Thus, the Messianic line proceeding, uh, proceeding from Hezekiah, thus the Messianic line proceeding from Hezekiah contained a pronounced degree of blackness demonstrated in the Kushite ethnicity of uh, uh, Zephaniah's father. Okay. So, you know, these is black people. Okay. This is not uh, a, a host. Ain't nobody putting on for you. Okay anything people are putting on in all these commercials and everything else that's out. All right. Anything, anybody want to say anything about any of this we went over? Uh, Asian, Asian, Asian uh, complexion was much darker mm -hmm. than is even represented on, on these models. Mm -hmm. uh, and people for a closer example, and the first pharaohs, the pharaohs, first pharaohs of Egypt, they were dark complexion. They weren't mm -hmm. mixed. They were actually dark complected people. 
Mm -hmm. uh, the, you remember the uh, Queen of Sheba when she went to meet King Solomon? She described herself as being uh, dark, but what did she say? Dark, but um, uh, homely, or she was kind of putting herself down because her complexion was so dark. Mm. Uh, so over the years, uh, the Arabs mixed with the um, Africans. Mm -hmm. and, and eventually the Europeans came in a mix with the Egyptians mm -hmm. and that uh, made them look more African-American. Mm -hmm. uh, but the original uh, Ethiop the original African nation were dark complected people. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, Uncle. Trish, was you gonna say something too? No, I was just, I just said I just enjoyed, enjoyed what we talked about. This oh, evening. okay, all right. all right, amen, amen. I thought I, I, I didn't want to cut you off. Thanks, Uncle. Yeah, you're right. You know, and I think I'm so glad we're talking about this because, uh, man, you know, I mean, I just hope that we share this information with other people so that they won't be in the dark. You know, it's good to talk about it, but I want us to share it. You know, share the information with people, man. Send a link to your brother, your sister, you know, your kids. You know, even if you have to cut off a little snippet of it, share a little snippet. You know, sometimes people watch five minutes or watch two minutes instead of watching the whole hour. You know, cut out a snippet of it, okay? You know how to do that. You know, and share it. You know, share it with your brother and your sister. Share it. Make this a gift to somebody during Christmas. Amen. Gift of knowledge. Okay. And we have so many more videos on, on here that somebody can read, I mean, listen to, and, and they can read the books and they can learn. How about we go forward? Let's go forward. All right. So pick your books up and uh, well, because we're almost at the next volume and uh you know we're gonna be continuing on the same topic you might be saying why is that because there's been over 400 years of oppression that's been done to to a people so it's a lot of reprogramming that needs to be done a lot, a lot of info a lot of info you know we can't expect you don't learn that in a year it takes a long time, you know. I'm right, right now. I'm studying the Ethiopian church. I'm learning the Ethiopian language. Uh, I'm hammered, am hammered, hammock, am hammered, something like that. Am, am hammered. I think it's what it's called. Uh, A M H A R I C. Okay, so you know, and then they got the ancient. Uh, language, uh, Gies, I think it's called Gies, of uh, that's that's their scripture language, you know, deal with the scriptural language. Okay, so there's a lot to learn, you know. Uh, we need to take some trips, you know, and even if we're not going out of the country, you can go over to the local uh, uh, Ethiopian church, you know, go to the Ethiopian church and uh, learn, you know, go to some of those. Uh, those settings and learn, okay? Uh, learn what, uh, what they know. Explore. Explore your people. All right, let's move on. We'll be on page 126. We'll come back, uh, pick up a book, and let's read. Uh, go to our YouTube page. More of what we have already there. Subscribe. Uh, do uh, also subscribe to this page if you're watching this on YouTube. Uh, go if you like to give, please give to PayPal.me backslash uh, a Family Bible Church MN as you see it on the screen there, and uh, you can email us if you have a ministry question or if you have a prayer concern or anything of that sort. We're here for you. So uh, we're so happy that you're tuning in and learning. And we pray that you have a good holiday, not caught up in the, the, the commercialism 
that keeps us bound financially and then and also uh, mentally. Uh, but let us be liberated to embrace the Jesus of the Bible and, uh, and live a life that is of truth and honesty and love, because that's what God calls us to. And so I hope that's what you do this, this season, is learn how to love yourself, learn how to love your God, learn how to love each other. Okay. With that being said, we'll close on out. Any, uh, any other concerns? Okay, you got anything? Are uh, you good? Everybody good? I'm good, cuz. Um, I would offer a suggestion. I, I don't know um, if... Um, I'm sure that uh, you're aware that if you just look around, we have more Africans uh, living in Minnesota than ever before. Mm -hmm. uh, to the extent that they... They have become uh, active in government, uh, not only state government, but local government. Mm -hmm. uh, I have been in public housing, uh, senior low rise, and uh, uh, the majority of uh, staff in the building where I live are Africans from all over Africa. I've mm -hmm. met uh, Ethiopians and Liberians and Nigerians and and uh, it's just amazing uh, how many Africans there are that um, have taken these low-paid jobs because of, um, well, in some cases, their, their education uh, was not accepted here in the States. In other cases, they, they have um, very little uh, education and um, have more difficulty dealing with the language, so they have to take what jobs they are offered. But we've got... The director of public housing now is um, Somalian. Mm. Number of Somalian uh, employees at uh, public housing. Mm. And uh, uh, Brooklyn Center uh, has a number of um, uh, Liberian uh, people in, in official uh, positions. And it, so you have an opportunity now that we didn't have years ago where you can have conversation with uh, African people who are, who are educated and able to communicate with you and, and share with you about their, uh, their culture. Uh, and they take a lot of pride in their culture. I mean, they, 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 in some cases, they, I can remember in the past where they literally looked down on African Americans because we didn't know our African culture because it wasn't taught, wasn't available to us. And so we've got a lot of catching up to do. But I like to talk with them because I've done so much reading. And, and when I share with them my knowledge about um, Africans in the Bible, it just blows them away. They just they just love to have uh, uh, that kind of positive uh, uh, reinforcement. And, and you know, I've had to say, well, well I never talk with no African-Americans that talk the way you do. <laughs> <laughs> And, and I'm a senior, so they, they just can't believe that, that a senior knows as much about uh, their African culture as I do. Mm. So they, they just love to talk with you about their culture. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I agree with you. You know, sometimes we wait until we get to say, oh, okay, we're going to take a trip to Africa and all that stuff. Well, we are Africans right here. Yeah. Make a trip to their church, make a trip, take them out to eat talk to them, learn about your culture, about where you're from, all that stuff. You know, learn. Learn. Uh, value it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the way other cultures and ethnicities value their, you know, you go into some of these houses and they'll have their 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 family crust on their wall and all this other kind of stuff. Yes, yeah. We should have some of that stuff on our wall. Yes. To know more and be proud about where we come from as well. So I agree. Yeah, All so right. we don't have to go All to right. Africa. It's, Africa is here. <laughs> As Africans here, we don't have to go to Africa. There's Africans right here. They are here. Our culture is here. And Minnesota is definitely here. You know, uh, we may not embrace it, but it's here. So let's start. Let's, let's close in prayer.
Amen. Uh, gracious God, we thank you, Lord, for everything you taught us today, Lord, as we go deeper into this study, Lord, help us to be more like you. Lord, let us embrace us all, Lord, because we are all children of the King. We thank you for it all. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, go in peace. We will convene again. Uh, not next week, because next week is uh, Christmas week, uh, but uh, we'll convene afterwards, and we'll send an email when we're ready to do so. All right. All right. Seasons yeah. greetings, everyone. All right. God bless you all. We'll see you in the New Year's. All right. God bless. All right. God, God bless. bless.